In this video, we're going to create a really natural looking paintbrush reveal on type in After Effects. So we're going to start by creating a single brushstroke animation, then use that to create a reveal on our type. And finally, go through some extra techniques to add texture and additional elements to take it to the next level. I'm going to be using some assets from this video's sponsor, Yellow Images. So first, a quick word about them. Yellow Images is the number one marketplace for high quality, premium mockups, creative fonts, 360 images, and a creative store full of amazing graphic assets like brushes, presets, lettering, illustrations, textures, UI kits, and more. You can also purchase a Yellow Ticket membership, which can make your project almost 10 times cheaper than before. An average asset will cost you only $1.50. You get three free items every month and a 30% discount for customers and mock-up services. You get half price on the creative store and instant synchronization of your Dropbox and Yellow Images account. For this project, I'm gonna be using this brushstroke font, this set of ink brushes for Photoshop, these PNGs of this melty head element, and this set of 2,350 paper textures. This type of texture pack is my favorite kind of asset to buy because it would have taken me so long to individually scan these all in myself. So a pack like this can save you lots of time and therefore money. Without the yellow ticket, these would cost $63.99. But with a yellow ticket, it's only $26. And if this was your first purchase of the month, three of these items would be free and it would only cost $1.50. Follow the link in the description and use my code BAN30 to get 30% off on a three month or annual premium membership yellow ticket and annual team membership yellow ticket. The coupon is limited and valid for one month only starting today. Now onto the process. Now the first thing we need to do is create our paint brush stroke and we're gonna do that in Photoshop. I'm in a new document and we've imported those ink brushes that we like and let's just on a new layer, test quickly a few of them and see what effects we get and see which one is gonna make the most realistic brush stroke. Okay, I think this one's gonna give us the most variety. So let's delete everything on this layer and start. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a paint stroke coming from the left of the screen to the right. But we're not gonna draw it all at once like that. We're gonna draw it in pieces so we can animate this later. So let's undo that and start from the beginning. And on the very left, we are gonna draw a very small brush stroke, the very smallest. And now we are gonna keep adding to this. And we're gonna do that by duplicating this layer with Command or Control J and then continuing this brush stroke only very slightly at first, duplicating it again, adding a bit more. And then each time we duplicate the layer, we're gonna add a bit more, doing pretty small increments at the start, and then we're gonna get bigger towards the middle. Then as we get to the end, we're gonna slow down by not drawing so much of the brush stroke at the end. There, I think we're done. Now if we turn all of these layers off and turn them on one by one, we can see how our animation will look. So now all we need to do, delete this background layer, so it's all on a transparent background and just save this document as a PSD. All right, now we're in After Effects. We have one comp open and it has a single text layer in it, which is what we are going to apply this effect to. I'm using this typeface called Flat Brush because I think its brushiness will suit our effect really well, but you can use this of course with any typeface you want or any other object for that matter. So now let's import our brush stroke. Let's go over to File Import or Command or Control I. Let's find where we save that PSD. And we want to make sure we import it, not as footage, but as a composition retained layer sizes. And we do want it to create a composition. So make sure this is checked, then hit import and hit okay. Let's drag that to our pre-comps folder and open it up. We turn on our transparency grid. We can see our brush here with all of our layers from Photoshop. So let's select all of our layers from the bottom to the top. And if we hit alt or option and then right square bracket, it will trim all of those layers to a single frame. Then if you right click, choose keyframe assistant and sequence layers, hit okay. It will put them all in a sequence so they are animated. Now let's drag our work area to the very end here and right click and choose trim comp to work area, there. So now the comp is just the length of those layers and a comp is a bit too big. So what we're gonna do is select region of interest. We're gonna draw around our shape and then we're gonna go up to composition and crop comp to region of interest. And that's just gonna make it a little more manageable. So we've got our animated brush stroke, let's apply that to our type. So in our type comp, we're going to drag in this brush stroke layer. And at the moment it plays and then disappears. So what we need to do is right click, choose time and freeze on last frame. So now once it's drawn on, it will stay there. Let's press U on our keyboard to get rid of those keyframes because we don't need to see them. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this comp to draw all of the strokes in our letters. So let's rotate it so it's facing upward and place it near the start of the M, scale it down so it's around the same width as our letter. Now this is obviously way too long for this M. We want this to be constrained 
within the bounds of this M. Let's turn on our transparency grid and you can see there's nothing behind it. We don't want it really to poke outside. So we could use some masks or we could use this text as an alpha mat for this brushstroke, but we're gonna be doing this a few times and that is gonna end up with a lot of layers. So the best way to do this is to put this text layer on top of our brushstroke layer and for its blending mode, choose stencil alpha. So what that does is constrain everything beneath it to the bounds of this layer. So if we turn our transparency grid on and move our brushstroke around, you can see that it's only visible within the letters M-E-L-T. Let's turn our background back on and let's play this animation, and see how it looks. There, we've got our first half of our M drawn on. And to make this easier, I'm gonna move the anchor point down to the very beginning of this layer so we don't need to keep moving its position. Then we're gonna duplicate it again with Command or Control D. Going to move it up to the top here, press R to bring up rotation and rotate it until it's in line here. I know it's a bit tricky to see because we don't have our text as a guide. So I'm going to duplicate our text layer, change the blending mode to normal, and then just turn the transparency down pretty low. So we have a faint idea of where our text is going to go. Okay, so now if we play it back, both our brushes are drawing on at the same time. So we need to offset the second brush stroke. So let's drag it across our timeline and let's find the point where the first brush stroke ends or completes drawing that part of the letter. And then our next one can continue. And you can tweak these to your own taste. Now, a lot of this process will be continuing to do that. And it honestly doesn't take that much time. I won't even speed this one up. Duplicate, drag to the bottom, rotate it up, adjust its position, done. Let's do it once more for the stroke down. There. Now for the next side of the E, I'm gonna duplicate this brush stroke, but I'm also gonna change its color to something maybe yellow. So it's a bit easier to differentiate at a glance in our timeline. So let's line this one up. But then when we go to do our next brush stroke, this short horizontal line of the E, our stroke is now much too long and it's going into either the next letters or the letters beforehand. And we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is line it up to roughly the end of this brush stroke, select our rectangle tool and draw a mask over that area. Let's do that for the other strokes on our E. And for the L, we can just copy the first and last stroke of the E and move them over to change their color too. Now, because we don't want it to look identical to this E, we can move our strokes around a bit like so. Now about now, you're probably thinking that I've been very sneaky by choosing a word that has no curved letters. There's no C's or O's or any other such round shapes in here. And well, you'd be right for thinking that but I will show you how to work with a round letter. So let's change this T in melt to a D. Let's change that on both type layers there. So the downward stroke will be the same, but when we get to our rounded section, we're gonna place it horizontally. And then what we could do is select our puppet pin tool, pin the start, and then a couple of pins along the way, and just move them into position along the axis of the D. Now you might want to use two comps for this, or you can try your luck by stretching it even further. Now it might look a bit too warped for us, but really without the context of knowing it's the same brush, I don't think you're gonna notice when you take a step back and see the animation in isolation. And an alternative method to get a curved line is to draw another curved paint stroke in Photoshop. The same process that we did for this one, just, you know, draw it curvy. Now with this technique, you've got a lot of room to adjust all of these brush strokes. So if you play it back and it's playing back too fast, you can always space out these strokes even more, or if you want more overlap on each stroke, you can do that too. Now I'm pretty happy with that. So we can delete this top text layer, and I'm gonna show you some more techniques to take it to the next level by making it even more textured and more painterly. So let's select all of these brush layers, duplicate them all with Control or Command D, and then bring them on top of the layer stack above this type layer. And at the moment, it looks like a massive mess, but it will look better soon, I assure you. The next thing we're gonna do is offset these by about two frames each, give or take, and let's hide them all for now because they are getting in the way. And let's just turn on the first layer to see what we're working with. So this first brush layer is now no longer being constrained to the shapes of our type, to the shapes of our M, but it is going too far outside of where we want it to. And what I want to happen is to make it look like a second brush stroke is being drawn on top of this one, which is why we've delayed it. But we do need to constrain it a bit more. So I'm gonna move this stroke around just so there's a bit poking out on the left and a bit at the top. And then if we grab our pen tool and just draw a mask around those edges and let's tweak the mask so we don't want any harsh lines where it looks very obvious that we've just got a straight mask drawn. Maybe we try to rotate it a bit and slide it over. So now it's looking a bit more natural. There, I think that looks good. So now what's happening when we play our animation is that our first stroke gets drawn 
And then the second stroke is now being drawn on top. And that just gives a bit more variety to the lines outside of our text. And that delayed motion just gives just a bit more animation, a bit more magic. So it just doesn't look as static. There's just a bit more depth to it. Now you don't have to add these for every one of these strokes, but if you do want, it really doesn't take that much time. It's just a case of turning that brush on, finding an area like underneath here, that we want to add a bit more texture to, grabbing a mask and drawing over the top. Adding an extra one of those to each of these strokes maybe took three or four minutes for this whole word. So it might be worth spending that time depending on how detailed you need your project to be. So now that we've got our text all brush stroke painted on and it is in its own comp, it has a transparent background if we turn our transparency off. So now we can do anything with it. So let's place that melt type comp in a new comp. Let's create a black solid as the background. Let's name it background because we always label our layers. Let's add a fill effect to our type so we can color it anything we want. Let's color it white as if it's paint drawn on a black surface. And now I'm gonna show you another technique for creating a looping texture, which I think is gonna really add some depth to this. So again, let's go over to file import and we are gonna find where we save those paper textures that we downloaded from yellow images earlier. Now I've got a, quite a few white paper textures here. So I'm gonna select the first white paper texture called white paper one. And this gives me the option to import as a JPEG sequence. And that is because this file is surrounded by files that have the same name, except they have a different number and that's incrementing. So then After Effects can read that as frames in an animation. Now we don't need to create a composition. So let's untick that and then hit import. And if we drag this image sequence, on top of our type, we can see we've got an animation of all of those pieces of paper. Now at the moment it doesn't loop and it goes way too fast. So let's right click, go to interpret footage, main, and we want to assume the frame rate is much lower than 24. Let's go to six frames per second. And we want it to loop, well, let's go 50 times, let's be generous and hit okay. Now we can just extend that out. And now we've got our paper looping back at a more reasonable speed. So let's zoom out. We can see this paper is massive. So let's scale it down. And let's add the curves effect to make some adjustments to it. Let's increase the contrast like this so we get some more darker areas in here. And we also want to invert it as well there and then change the blending mode from normal to screen. And then we've got some added texture over the top of our animation. We can also use that same technique of using an image sequence to import the other element we downloaded from yellow images, which is this melting head object. So I'm gonna import these, scale that down too, and now we have a rotating head that we can play with. I'm going to go to time, time stretch, and slow it down a fair bit. And now I've got this as a separate animated element that we could use to maybe make a cool background like all the hip young kids are doing today, or really anything we like with it. Just like our paintbrush that we made. We made this one element in about two minutes in Photoshop, and then using some different techniques, we can use that to build out a really textured, painterly, brushed on type effect. And with a few more layers and some extra tweaking, it can look something like this. Thanks again to Yellow Images for sponsoring this video. Having access to a library of assets like this that the Yellow Ticket gives can save you a massive amount of time and money when you need to create your projects. Again, follow the link in the description and use my code BEN30 to get a 30% discount on a Yellow Ticket. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.